You are watching Hot Springs Village Venues. Hello, I'm Dennis Simpson with Village Venues and thanks for joining us again. Today, we're thrilled to have Miss Donna. Miss Donna, say your last name for everybody. L word. L word, L word. Like ginger ale. Ginger ale, I, I, that's something I can do. That's something <laughs> I can do. The reason we have Donna today and I'm excited about it is because Donna is with the Recreation Committee. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that committee. And Now these are all volunteer. Right. The Recreation Committee is one of the 10 standing committees in the village hmm. and made up of all volunteers who have a real love for the uh, recation and facilities and everything fun about the that village. That makes the village happen. Yeah, it really does. it's all real fun things. Well, tell me real quick now, is this in charge of all recreation or just some specific items? So you might think that trails and lakes are recreation, but they have their own committees because they're so involved uh, and so, uh, so much going on there in itself. But we also, under our committee, we right. have uh, tennis, we have pickleball, the fitness center, um, the pool, the upcoming new pool, bocce, lawn bowling, oh dog goodness. park, everything else fun comes under recreation. It sounds like in some ways, Donna, that a lot of things you touch on are mm, controversial. Where's the pool go? Why do we need one? And what happened? Catch me up to date on the pool first. What happens? So the pool is the the plans for the pool are currently sitting with the health department oh. being reviewed, which is, is common procedure. As soon as that comes back from the health department, we will be breaking ground. And I want to be, make sure and recap, I mean, we, I remember there were a lot of discussions about where to put this, but is it going right back where it was? Going right back where it was. There were some advantages to putting it there, uh, some things that were already in place, utilities, mm. uh, parking. Parking, yeah. Uh, and certainly that has become a very uh, nice recreation center there. It really is. Yeah. With the new pickleball courts <laughs> and the mini golf, oh, yeah. basketball. So there's a lot going on there for uh, individuals and families to take into consideration all of that space and putting it there. It's just perfect. That's wonderful. So. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. You t hit the big one, pickleball. This is apparently taking off. Now, the, we, we've got the courts. How long did it take to build those? And I mean, tell me about that. Is that how do you where, do you, where do I go to get a pickleball court at? Do I contact an engineer or what? Well, and that's, we had a club full of people who were willing to put their time and effort in to researching how to build those pickleball courts. Really? And that then in coordination with our people at the village, were able to establish a plan and go forward with bids and built that. I'm thinking, Maybe it was about uh, six, seven months it took to put in the courts. Yeah. But it pickleball, Dennis, is the fastest growing sport in the United I States. I've heard this over. It's fastest growing, fastest growing. Fa Why? Why? Well, because I think it's. It doesn't take as long to play. It doesn't oh. take a lot of time. You rotate and play uh, different uh, with different. Um, uh, players, uh, right, right, right? right? And it's on a half of what is a tennis court, so you're oh. not running as much. Oh, so it's easier on your knees. It's a, uh, I don't know, <laughs> because you're also doing a lot of quick twisting. But it's played with a paddle, more like a ping pong paddle, right. but bigger. But what is really challenging, because I've played tennis before and I've now played a little pickleball, is when you hit that wiffle ball, of course it doesn't bounce anything like a tennis ball. Oh really? So it's it's, so it's not, not you're running for it a little bit more. So it's fun. We have uh, about um, 350 members of the pickleball club. Wow, really? Already? And we've already had a maybe people have seen or have heard about, but if you haven't, we had a great pickleball tournament. I heard about this. Now we had, how many people came? 250 played 250 in the tournament. 250 to the village. That's right. And, and um, uh, it was a fun, exciting event. I was there. We had lots of booths for vendors. We had food, we had music, we had, and, and in the end, a little bit of profit for money, actual money left. Yes, out. we made money. We made money. So now, obviously, 
I mean, and, and people don't know this a lot of times, and we discuss this many times. The bottom line is, is that a lot of the things in the village are subsidized one way or the other. I mean, golf is like a million two a, a, a year. Okay. And if you think about it, you say, wow, a million two, well, you know, we need to cut expenses. We need to, I hear a lot of people, we, we don't need to be in the restaurant business or whatever. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe we don't need to be in the golf resort business either, you know, because I mean, these are big dollars. But if you allocate those dollars for something where you get a lot of good back out of it, I mean, I can't help but think at the pickleball tournament, we set our best foot forward, did we not? Absolutely. And that's just a beautiful facility. It looks beautiful. It does. It, it is fantastic. Yeah, it yeah. does, doesn't it? Oh, but it's professional, um, a grade quality of, of materials that were used there. So it is. it really shows off the village well. And you know, remember that subsidies come from our assessment fees that uh, residents pay, mm -hmm. which is like almost like in any city a tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in a city, those taxes go to support the the maintenance and facilities and, and such. And the lifestyle. And the lifestyle. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's and, all it's doing. And speaking of that now, and I know you're not. And, and let me let me say this. So you said we we basically cover the woodlands. We cover pickleball, uh, bocce ball, I think, bowling, lawn bowling, tennis-ish thing. Mm -hmm. Now, what we don't cover, and I'll get back to this in just a minute, but we, you don't cover the hiking trails. That's a different committee, too. That's correct. Okay. And then you don't cover the lakes. Right. But hiking trails are within the recreation budget, but there is, it's, it has its own committee because trails are also one of the number one reasons people I mean, are moving to communities, yeah. having access to hiking and biking trails. Yeah. So the one thing that I do know about trails is that I walk them <laughs> and I enjoy them, right. uh, but that also that uh, funds are being appropriated or should I say planned for the 2020 budget to expand our trails, uh, uh, taking into account what has been planned really? and also biking trails. So hiking and biking trails, there is a plan for them to be expanded in 2020. How cool, how cool. Now, and I wanna, I'm gonna chase a tiny rabbit here just for a second because I've talked to my lovely wife about this and she's not quite a taker yet, okay? okay. But if you go out the Cortez Golf Course gate, you know, you can go straight north and you go kind of into Jesseville, yes. right? I'm pretty sure if I put my kayak in the middle of the in the middle fork of the Saline River, and I paddle all the way back down, I bet I can get out at the Granada, uh, the uh, nature center, the Cooper Nature Center near the Granada area. Is that correct? I think that you can, and I will. I am not an expert on that, so I'm going to be right there with your wife. Okay, I'm looking for <laughs> feedback. Anybody that wants to go ride on the kayak, come on, let's go. I think that would be awesome. Basically, kayak the village. Yeah, it would be very doing. exciting. That would be fun. And kayaking is a number one, another one of those number one activities that people are looking for when they move here. Well, when we touched on the trails real quick, and I want to mention that when we have guests come, we, we mentioned to them that on the west-hand side, basically from Sierra West, there's this beautiful hiking system that's like six or seven miles that's a lot of trails. That was originally the cart path system for all the village and the grocery store and the post office and mm -hmm. all that. And then if you get to the Soto Dam and go east of that, there's a beautiful system that goes to the opposite end. And as I understand, we're trying to put those ends together someday. There is a master plan to do that. Great. Uh, and ex other trails beyond that, but to connect that and have an entire system through the village, yes, we wow, are looking at wow. that. And, and you know we that, already have 30 miles of trails. I know, and, and, so. you know and, and I think we need to realize we're standing on the backs of giants that got us here. These are people, visionary people, and, and committees donating their time like you, going, well, why don't we connect one end of the village to the other? Why don't we go 14 miles from the end, opposite end to opposite end? I mean. It's, it's right. just that crew. Well, and it's not done just as an idea. I mean, there are subcommittees for for capital decisions, subcommittees on on the cost and fees. There are subcommittees on design and, and, and wants of the village. So it's not just like my recreation committee has one committee and we just sit here and fantasize about what we want. The committee members, and we're looking always for great committee members, have to have expertise in finance, engineering, um, really? uh, marketing, and we look for that to balance the committee so that we can do the very best for the village. Well, that I we think can do. the people that aren't involved sometimes, I think they believe that, you know, 
a committee like yours or even mm -hmm. just two or three people sometimes will, we've got you know X many million or whatever to spend this year and we're just gonna go and, and go shopping and, and the board's gonna approve it. But there's a lot of legwork and a lot of logistic making sure it works type stuff so that we don't get embarrassed and like, well, gee, this is a beautiful pickleball court, too bad the coding doesn't work or That's something right. like that. Because that would right. be easy to do, I'm sure. Absolutely. So there's a lot of research that goes into that. And that's why uh, uh, residents of the village, we can take into account some of their expertise because the amount of people it would take to have on staff with yeah. all of that expertise oh, it'd be is fantastic. Oh, fantastically expensive. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but the, exper the in expertise, the knowledge that these people bring to the table. That's right. Uh, well, now, uh, an idea comes to mind that this was just a recent formulation is the dog park. Now, who came up with the dog park and how did that, I mean, I don't, I remember that, that we had a fundraiser to do that, but that was an old RV storage unit kind of back down behind the DeSoto Dam. That's right. So, uh, several years ago, a group of residents who really wanted to have a place where they could let their dogs run right. free but, but be safe. Uh, put together a plan to work with the Property Owners Association to find a space for this dog park, and then they raised all of the funds. This is all grassroots? All grassroots. Really? And then at, after a couple of years, after it was in operation, turned it over to the Property Owners Association, which was always the plan, mm -hmm. uh, for them to maintain it. Uh, this year, very exciting, uh, lighting is up and working there, so in oh, the, the heat of the, yes, really? in the heat of the summer, when you're saying, "Oh, I might not want to walk my dog at two in the afternoon," right. go over in the evening when it's cooler. The lights can uh, come on, and you can be out there until ten o'clock at night with well, your and, and let's with come, your pooch. Exactly, and let's come back to this real quick. And I want to address the guests at home or the walk, viewers at home real quick. A lot of people don't realize there's a there are many places in the village that are very compact and have a tremendous amount of opportunities. The area behind the dam. Uh, basically, if Seville is the street that comes off of DeSoto at the three mile, mile marker or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but Seville comes out and goes to the end of the dam and there's a hiking trail that goes down the waterfall there. There's the beach there. And what people don't realize, back behind that's the dog park. There's another nature walking trail down there and I think that's the lawn bowling area too. That's right. So that area is really becoming a, a small little hub, a lot yeah. like the DeSoto Rec area where the pool and the pickleball courts are. Because down there is a beautiful lawn bowling green, brand new bocce ball courts are being built that will be tournament quality. Now bocce ball, is, is, how does that vary from lawn bowling? I really don't know. Okay, so bocce is, um, uh, it's, it is different. You're, you're, uh, uh, it's the size of the lane is different. It's a, it played on a different surface. So they could not play bocce on the lawn bowling oh, green. Okay, yeah. um, but uh, so that will all be down there. Brand new uh, rest, uh, restroom facilities are going in really? there too. So that people that are using the dog park, that are walking the trails, really? that are playing uh, the games, can all have access to that as well. So it's it's a, it's a own little hub. We're gonna to go to a quick break and I wanna tell just for a moment, thank you, seriously, thank you and all the people who volunteer their time to, to have a master plan and have a, a description this way that it looks like it costs a lot more than it does. I mean, I would look at something like this and think, how is all this engineered and how is all this put together? And it's because of the volunteers that do that for us. That's right, that's right, right. it does help. And we'll be right back. D&D Village Properties offers high-quality rentals on Lake DeSoto in beautiful Hot Springs Village. Additionally, D&D Village Properties also offers lake, view, and golf lots inside of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. If you'd like more information, please go to ddvillageprop.com. Again, that's ddvillageprop.com, only in Hot Springs Village. Thanks for joining us again, and I'm back here with Donna, who you may have seen at Arvest Bank at the bottom of the hill, that's who, right. if I'm not mistaken, has recently gotten a promotion. Is that correct, Donna? Oh, that's right, and uh, pleased to be president of the bank in this area. We love this community. We have lots of uh, fun uh, supporting the community, so yes, thank you. Well, and it's very clear you're, you have fun doing it because, I mean, you're so involved in the community, helping with the rec department, with the, the rec committees and some of the other things I know you work with. 
We, we talked about the things that are covered. We talked about the, the uh, pickleball, bocce ball, the new bocce ball coming in, the bowl, lawn bowling, all these areas and an incredible amount of great stuff. I tell you what, on a really, really, really hot or really, really, really cold day, if you're feeling like, I need to get out and do something, right? let's go walk a trail at 104 degrees and 88% humidity. No, how about we go to the Coronado Center and we get on one of the exercise bikes? How about That's that? right, or the a three-lane track, and yeah. you can walk there, or there's a 25-meter pool. Uh, there's a beautiful, it's a beautiful workout facility. It really is. Uh, it? We're very lucky to have it. It is, and in fact, for those residents who have uh, silver and fit and silver sneakers as part of their offering through their insurance program. Right, I've seen that, yeah. That facility is completely free. Really? All, Every, the, the, all the daily fees? All, t completely free. So all their classes, uh, and we offer classes on everything, uh, yoga, spin, aerobics, I mean, everything you can think of. So it of. includes the classes? Includes the classes, includes the pool. It includes the sauna, the the hot, hot tub, tub, everything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking that I would bet there are a lot of people that don't know that that facility is completely free to them when they move to our community. So I'm um, want everybody to know I bet. about well, it. Well, I mean, it's 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 literally a wasted benefit if you don't know about exactly. it. Exactly. You know? I tell you what, on some of the winter days, uh, Diane and I will go and just sit in the steam room and go, ah, oh, this uh. is. Uh, Okay, we're in Tampa. This feels good. Okay, yeah. You know. That's right. And and maybe go lay out on. We'll actually take a chair and go out lay out on the back deck if it's a little enough sunshine. It's beautiful. You have a view of the lake there. It really is. And uh, yes, but you know our temperatures here are never that cold. They're, okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they're yeah, not a yeah, hundred and four yeah. with no, very no, often no. either. Just, just ninety eight. But <laughs> that's right. But it's true. On a hot day, great way to exercise, and on a cool day when you want. Uh, you might not want to be out in a heavier coat walking the trails this is a great way to get some exercise great. and also you mentioned earlier when we were off camera you mentioned that you actually oversee basically what happens at the woodlands now is that both sides of the woodlands there's the woodlands auditorium mm -hmm. and then there's the woodlands uh, basically conference rooms right so yes everything that goes on just about in entertainment and rec falls under the recreation committee except like i said for trails and and uh, lakes but uh so at the woodlands that's like our hub i call that our hub of entertainment well it's right there by the rock porch it's rock, rock por porch it's grove concert. park yeah grove park has uh performances going on there every um, the first Saturday of every month is is Rock Porch, and it's wonderful. It was we were there this last month. Were and you? Man, it, just bring out a chair and just we were literally we had been all over the village and we were driving back by and I said I wonder what's oh, it's Rock Porch. Oh my God! So we whipped out a couple of chairs That's and sat right. and had, heard a great concert. Um, under the trees with the little cafe lights and it's just you bring your picnic basket and, you, and smell the hamburgers and hot dogs cooking or and they have facilities if you need to run to the restroom or whatever it's great it's really nice. so then that's and <coughs> also you know that the green market's held there too yeah yeah yeah. so the the farmers market is there on thursday every thursday morning during all well april through october but on the other side of grove park yes is the woodlands auditorium a 650 seat beautiful entertainment venue great uh, audio great, great video. yes in fact um, I believe all of that audio's just been updated mm -hmm. yeah. there are some new lights uh, slated for the 2020 um, budget uh, to, they, they keep changing those over to LED lights yeah. to save money mm -hmm. and um, uh, but there's always something going on there it doesn't matter there's well, all now, sorts of entertainment. Well, now I understand, and as I understand it, and I want to draw the distinction here, a lot of times there are concerts that the POA will help put together, sure. or does the POA rent out that building, or what? How do you? How do? I, how would I go about doing that? Absolutely. I... So the POA sponsors events. Uh, there are clubs and organizations that hold fundraising events there, and and they rent the facility, and private citizens rent this. Really? So residents can rent it and people from outside of our community can rent it, which is great because that's all income for the Woodlands, yeah. defraying that cost of the subsidy. And what is it, is it like six or 700 or 800 a night for the Woodlands or what? Uh, it, actually, it varies greatly in that 
It depends on what type of oh. performance is coming in, sure. how much tech they need, mm -hmm. what if they're going to need uh, a backline uh, uh, music instruments for that. Oh, yeah. uh, there's lots of very so I wouldn't want a quote rate. Sure, sure, sure. But it's I would say it's reasonable. reasonable. Yeah, very reasonable. Or for a or, 650 seat auditorium. Like That's frankly, correct. like you would find at any small uh, casino, or you know. Well, we're uh, way under market for any other um, auditorium that would be rented, say, in the city of Hot Springs or oh, any yeah. other other uh, large city. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. And then the other side of the woodlands, I say, I call it the card room. Is what goes through my mind because there's so many people that come and play bridge and card and all kinds of stuff there. That's right. So Casa de Carta is oh. a, uh, a building there, you're right, where uh, it is one of the top 50 bridge clubs in the United States, uh, which it just surprises me. You know, we mentioned I work for the bank and people will come to my desk and I always ask, why are you moving to our community? And I can tell you how many times uh, people have set, told me, I'm moving here for cards. For uh, cards, I'm, to play bridge. Yes. And so that facility is there, and then there's some other additional rooms there that are used for other, uh, uh, perform I wouldn't say performances, but presentations. Yeah. So the Washita Speaker Series will bring uh, speakers oh, that's right. in. Yeah, 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 they do that um, uh, Lots of organizations will use it for other events there as well. Wow, and now you also cover tennis, is that correct? Tennis, yes, we have uh, 14 courts, I'm sorry, I believe it's 11 courts, 14 is pickleball, and we have eight hard, uh, I, I'm going to change that, Dennis, to no, be it's accurate, hard. it's 11. It's eight clay courts and three hard courts uh, okay, up the there at the tennis center. I don't even know that I know the difference. Yeah, clay, I thought. clay is a lot softer to play on. Oh. Uh, people enjoy it more. It's a lot easier on the knees. Uh, hard courts are, um, but are more common. Yeah. So we have both because we will have uh, many of our residents play in tournaments yeah, and outings. Yeah, I was outings. about to say, yeah. I've heard uh, people had had mm -hmm. tournaments. We've actually had tournaments here before. That's right. And so they want to play on both types of surfaces. So they're prepared when they go off to other locations representing our community. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a uh, wonderful facility over there. Bob Wagstaff's our tennis pro and he does a wonderful job. How, how busy is that facility? I mean, is it is it occupied most times? It what? has um, uh, a league play, also really? open play. Uh, Bob organize, organizes a lot of the league play. There is a tennis association that organizes league play. There are lights on some of the courts, so yeah. you can play into the evening when it during when it is really warm. I had no idea. I really yeah. didn't. Oh, I, we just, have I just live here. I, I mean, well, and over there too, we have a great little playground for residents who maybe play tennis and they want to bring the kids along and that is all being updated in 2019 actually wow. real soon all I the really, equipment's been purchased i had no idea now number one how it number one i hope there are people out there watching and i hope you want to volunteer for a committee and you've got some time yeah. how would i do that how would i go about it and, and what, what's the process always on our website uh, on the POA's website, explorethevillage.com, right. right. go to member resources and you can look up, uh, I believe it's on governance, where you will find uh, information about the standing committees and whether there are openings. There's an application you fill out. It's the same one for all committees. Really? It's submitted and then the chairs of the committees along with the liaisons to the board interview those people and uh, we make a selection. So if I wanted to be on the Lakes Committee or, or the Rec Committee or That's whatever, right. and I could go ahead and add in. That's right, we hope you will. I hope I will too. <laughs> I get off my silly butt and start doing some stuff. That's right. Thank you for joining us today on Village Venues. I'm Dennis Simpson, this has been Donna Aylward. Aylward, like Ginger Aylward, who's joined us, and we're so happy today. We'll see you next time, and thanks for joining. Thank you for watching Hot Springs Village Venues. Please stay tuned and follow us on Facebook to see the next episode.